Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Usually when I say that, I'm kidding. But today I thought I would make a TED Talk to uh, talk about what I've learned in blended and personalized learning and talk about my journey into blended and personalized learning. So my journey started last spring. I was behind with technology. I work in a small rural school district south of Lubbock. And to say we were behind is a bit of an understatement. Um, a lot of the things that I wanted to do technology-wise uh, in my classroom, our school just didn't have the capability to do that. So I was behind. And when the pandemic started and we closed down school and went virtual, it was jarring for all of us that work in my school district. But um, it was my 18th year of teaching. I thought I kind of knew what I was doing. And I was put into a situation where I did not. And I didn't like it at all. Um, I felt that I was incompetent. I felt ill-prepared. I hate that feeling. I had not felt that in a long time um, to that degree. And especially, you know, things that um, being able to be an effective teacher, um, that, that was hard. I, I didn't feel very effective. And I wanted to change that. I, I think when you have some of those jarring moments, you want to get ahead of the curve. You want to fix it so that you never feel that way again. Um, it wasn't fair to my students. Um, and so I wanted to learn, I wanted to be better. And I also saw that this platform, the blended, maybe not the way we were doing it, um, and maybe not exactly the way the pandemic uh, had us uh, doing this, but I thought, this has potential. There, are, There's something here that education is going to grab onto and I don't think it's gonna go away. So I wanted to be on the front of that. So I saw that Texas Tech had a blended and personalized learning program. Um, I graduated from Tech a long time ago in 2002. So um, I wanted to go back and be a Red Raider and to learn about blended and personalized learning so that I can be part of this, what I think is gonna be a great change in education. Um, so what have I learned this semester? Let me show you. <clears throat> well, what's changed my way of thinking? What do I know now that I didn't know in August? First of all, it's complicated. Blended and personalized learning is not um, something that you can just snap your fingers and you have. It's uh, it's time consuming, like most things that are worthwhile uh, to do in education, but it, there are huge benefits. And eventually, once you put that time in, you get some time back on the, on the other end of it, I think. Um, you learn some ways to save time for you and for your students. Um, technology rich does not necessarily mean blended. I learned that through the readings and, and some of the videos early on in the course. Technology is a tool but that doesn't necessarily make it a blended learning environment. Uh, likewise, differentiated does not mean personalized. So um, the students need to have a voice and a choice. They need to set their own uh, learning goals. And then the curriculum plan comes after that to reach those goals, to reach mastery in those things um, and um, to do it at their own pace with some of their own preferences and so forth. Um, I think that each student does deserve his or her own personalized learning goals. I think this could, could change education drastically and for the better if students have uh, ownership in their own education, if it's not just something that we are forcing them to do. If they see that their own goals are being met um, then I think it's going to, to really change the way we, the way we do things. Um, all of the work and time are definitely worth it. In implementation activity number one, the student that uh, worked with me on that, um, she struggles, but she's a hard worker and it has had huge benefits for her just sitting down with her and doing the SMART goals and her seeing um, the outcomes of her efforts has been huge. That's really more about her than it is about me. And I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned. It's more about them than it is about me. And it's always, always should be that way. 
but um, definitely in implementation activity number one, um, I saw the benefits that um, can come out of this when students reach their goals. It's pretty amazing to watch. And she's continued to, um, to progress after that activity in her reading comprehension, especially in vocabulary development. So she even got a hundred on her last test and I was so excited. So um, the next thing is through implementation activity number two, I wouldn't consider that one as successful um, because the entire class was involved, uh, my ninth grade uh, ELAR class. And I, I think that the idea was good, but I needed to change some things. Uh, many students decided to just choose the thing that was the easiest. Um, so I think I learned that students need to understand their own role in it, that it's not just the normal, here is what the teacher is asking me to do and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take the easiest way out. But, so um, I think there has to be still some accountability in there, but, um, if I were to do that one over again, I would, I would make sure that the students were more involved with the um, with the data and why they were doing the things they were doing. So, and then through the peer coaching activities and uh, and class readings and videos, I learned so much about just different ideas that um, can help me when I'm getting into this and trying new things you know, from doing like rotations and from lots of, of different technology tools that my classmates have used and just seeing how it's, it's amazing to see teachers do what they do. And so I loved getting to, um, to look at some different ideas um, and, and that refreshed me in so many different ways. So what commitments do I have to blended and personalized learning? Um, what timely actionable steps will I take to proceed in blended and personalized learning in my classroom uh, as, uh, as a teacher? So first of all, I'm going to benchmark all of my ninth graders in January. I always do that. Um, but I think this time the data collection and um, analysis of the benchmark will be quite different because I'm going to be using it differently. Um, and I will be using it more than I have in the past. Um, which I think is a good thing that it's, that we're not just testing to test. I mean, what's the point if we're not using it, right? Um, and I'm going to have students create SMART goals. I think that from implementation activity number one, seeing that work for that student, I think that could be something that we do um, for the STAR EOC based upon their data there. And I hate to base it all around STAR, but that's the world we live in. And so, um, and that's the data that's readily available and that we're going to be using in the spring. So um, that's what we're going to start with in January. We're gonna design personalized instruction based upon that data um, and student goals. So they are all going to have their own, basically STAR EOC plan um, to get them to where they need to be um, in April. So we're going, I'm going to implement instruction and intervention using technology applications and in-person instruction. We're going to do rotations um, and uh, at least on a weekly basis, we'll have one full class day um, in person that we are rotating around and doing different things um, dealing with this plan. So then the real test is in April and we'll see how we do. Uh, what intentions do I have? for blended and personalized learning. My overall intentions um, as they apply to BLPL are to learn more about technology applications. I'm still behind on that, but I'm getting there. Um, I would like to have better and more consistent data collection. I've learned that that's not just star scores, that's uh, non-academic data. There are so many different ways I can collect data. Um, I can, you know, do inventory or, you know, um, like interest inventories. Um, one of my classmates had an awesome one that she showed me. Or, and then I can, you know, look at, at just all sorts of things that we do um, as sources of data, not just star data. So the other thing is I need to develop a more organized monitoring system. I think that that's going to be in the form of like Google Sheets um, and kind of have 
a teacher version of what the students personalized learning goals are. Um, and then for me to monitor as we're going forward. Um, so that is my plan starting in January. And I've kind of set a timestamp from January to April to, to give this a shot. And then of course, from there, I'll have steps moving forward. Uh, I also want to incorporate rotations. So we're gonna have a star day, one day a week. Um, and then we'll have different um, uh, rotation stations, I guess you would call it, um, working with different elements of the, of the essay, reading comprehension, revising, editing, and then um, just talking with me about different components of the test and, um, and using that face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. So we're gonna do that once per week this spring at the minimum. And as we get closer to the test, probably more, more than that. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, I really have learned a lot this semester. I can't wait to learn more and get even, um, and become even more proficient with blended and personalized learning. So thank you so much for coming to my TED Talk.